Hello, aspiring artists. It's Miss Patty at Samuels Public Library. I'm happy to be with you and anytime that you can uh, take in this recording and um, be with me for this topic of abstract art. That is what we are going to focus on for this episode of Aspiring Artists. So I hope to highlight three artists. Um, perhaps you've heard of one or two of them, but there will be three that I will talk about. And then we will do our own art. I will demonstrate a few abstract possibilities. And I want you to know that we would love to hang any of the art that you create um, from this program. So, uh, aspiring artists, um, hopefully you'll get inspired by one of the projects. So let me share this with our um, PowerPoint on abstract art. Okay. So Let's see here. And there we go. Thank you for your patience. All right, so what is abstract art? Here is a definition. It is art that does not attempt to represent an accurate depiction of a visual reality or something or someone, but instead uses shapes colors, forms, and symbols to achieve the effect. And um, so I think as we look at some of the artists and art, you'll see that the focus is really and truly on the um, shapes and forms and colors. So let's continue. So the three abstract artists that I want to talk to you about are first, and Henri Matisse, and this is an example of his um, flower arrangement, still life. And as you can see, there's different colors and different shapes, but even though he could make it very realistic, like a photograph, because he was very talented, he chose instead to give uh, an abstract idea of those items. And our next artist that we'll talk about is Pablo Picasso. And he too um, very clearly chose to give an abstract idea of the things that he painted and the people. And lastly, I have Makoto Fujimura. And this is very abstract expressionism and just uh, very beautiful and representative. And he has titles for his works. So we will go next. So first we'll talk about Henri Matisse. So he was from France and this is him. And this is a self-portrait. He was quite the pipe smoker. So uh, he lived in France and, um, and is considered uh, very influential in developing abstract art. One of the things I thought you would um, enjoy knowing is that he loved his cats. And he had three cats and he liked drawing and painting them. And the first one is Minouche. The second one is Kusi. And the third one is La Puce. And you know, um, so Minouche is just a name, a French name. Kusi means cousin in French. And La Puce means the flea. <laughs> So um, I wonder if his cats had problems with fleas. So here he is um, drawing 
a pigeon or is that a dove? He did both. He had a fondness for pigeons and doves. And um, so here we see him sketching and perhaps going to turn it into one of these paintings. Later in life, Matisse sadly was um, in a wheelchair, but it didn't stop him from creating. So these pictures that you see here are paper cutouts. So he did amazing cutouts with pretty colors and forms and just um, did uh, like collage, but very much abstract. Our next artist is Pablo Picasso. I thought you might find it interesting that he actually had 23 names. I'm not going to say all the names, but um, he included, uh, his parents included family names and other uh, important uh, religious names that were important to them. He was also famous for wearing this striped shirt, and that's a French um, sailor uh, shirt that he was famous for wearing all the time. He actually was born in Spain, but then spent many years in France. France was famous for being an artistic community. And here is one of his paintings. And as you can see, um, it's very musical, but he doesn't attempt to uh, draw a piano exactly the way a piano looks, but you know it's a piano. And uh, it's very lively and has the sense of music. So that is uh, a very abstract but effective um, piece by Pablo Picasso. He went through a period in his life where he painted all um, his paintings were shades of blue. They call it his blue period. And this is a quote by him. What I dream of is an art of balance, purity, and serenity. So this is another set of paintings by Picasso. This one, he was friends with Matisse and he too liked to draw pigeons and doves. And this is like a Mediterranean scene. And this is a famous uh, picture of his with uh, called Petite Fleur and Little Flowers. He's very famous for um, his line drawings that with very simple strokes makes it very clear what it is. And it's very compelling. And this is a, a, also a Mediterranean scene that's very lovely. I believe it's Barcelona, but I forget. Picasso's still life. As you can see, he went from Impressionism, with that which we have talked about before, and um, he moved into more abstract and eventually people called art like this cubism and it caught on but some of the critics said oh it's just a bunch of cubes <laughs> so you can see how all the blocks in his art here that's more cubism oh i want to so I wanted to tell you also about uh, Matisse and Picasso. They were friends and they lived at a similar period of time. So uh, I think you would like that. And something interesting about Matisse is that he was supposed to be a lawyer and then he got sick. He had a surgery uh, and had to have his appendix out and he was very, very sick for a long time. And while he was recovering, his mom gave him art supplies and he just 
loved it so much that he changed his course in life. And we appreciate that because now we still can enjoy his artwork. So my next person of interest is alive today. And his work can be seen in um, famous museums all over the world. And he, his name is Makoto Fujimura. And he was born in Boston, but then his family, um, his parents were from Japan and they moved back to Japan for a while. So he has dual citizenship from both of those countries and his artwork expresses um, some of the best of both of our countries, Japan and America. He's very famous. He's an artist, a writer, a speaker, and a filmmaker. And his themes are very much about um, meditation and silence and quiet and beauty and trauma and recovering from trauma from events in the world. So this is uh, his Japanese influence is called Nihonga and that is classic Japanese art and his the other um, definition of his artwork is called abstract expressionism. Silence and beauty. Art making is an act of hope. And I think here you see um, this is definitely uh, a Japanese influence on this beautiful painting and here as well. So I mentioned that um, some hard things have happened and he took um, to painting in response to difficult things. There was um, some deaths that shocked our country in a school called Columbine. And this is a painting he did for um, those lives lost at Columbine. And this is also another, um, the Columbine and flowers. These he did post 9-11 when um, in New York, um, a very important building was destroyed. And so he did these, this is post 9-11 and Beauty for Ashes. Very thoughtful artists. So I hope you enjoyed looking at their artwork. They had uh, interesting lives. And uh, maybe someday you'll go to a museum and see their artwork and see um, even and hear about Makoto Fujimura and what he's up to. So this is, these are some ideas for you. This is called uh, How to Draw Like Matisse. So this is kind of his style. And I had fun doing this. And you can just use, you can use crayons. You can use colored pencil. You could paint. I used um, a, a Sharpie, a pen to do this and I first outlined it with the um, black pen, as you can see, kind of like making it like a coloring page. And then I used my watercolor set and filled it in. So um, that was very fun to do. And like this, these are colors that um, Matisse might have used. You know, he was his um, art was so bold and crazy, they called him a fauvist. And the fauvist <laughs> was a, a word in French that meant wild beast, because people weren't used to the bold, crazy, wild colors that he would use. But eventually it caught on and they appreciated what he was doing. He said once that um, green does not always mean grass. So he had fun playing with colors 
and making things different colors than um, traditionally you would think of. So you could do this on your own. So that is one idea. Another idea, let me see here, is Picasso faces. So these, um, I'll show you the sheet that you can use to give you ideas. And you know, you can come back to this video and, and pause and uh, look at these. So he was famous, Picasso, for some pretty abstract faces with different expressions. And this is a, a sheet that you can look at. This shows different heads that you can decide to use. You can do different eyes. He was famous for doing an eye that was looking at you and then an eye that was looking the other way. Takes some getting used to, right? And then these are some different lips you can use. And of course, noses. And you pick your favorite colors. Again, if you do any of these projects, we would love to have them have you bring them in and hang them. So these are some fun projects you can do. This is called um, dot paint smear. So all over your paper, you just make little dots. And then you take, fold a piece of paper really sharply. And then you use it like a scraper, but just gently pull it down. And it makes this interesting, colorful, like a raining rainbow. This I'm gonna show you how to do is called finger paint weave. So I played with it and did one myself. So you put all your dots. So this was the one I did. It was very fun and very messy. So you have to have lots of paper towel, <laughs> but it's kind of cool how the colors weave. So I thought I would do one for you and I will we'll go back. I covered it so it wouldn't dry out while we were talking about the artists. And so let me get our screen so that you can see this. There we go. All right, so bring this down so you can see it. And oh, I think I need to put on my art apron. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> because I can get pretty messy. So that's all about being prepared, having your paper towel and maybe your wipes. So let's get ready here. Okay. So this is what they did. Let me, <laughs> like that, go down. Here, there, and here. And if you want, you can wipe your fingers as you go if you don't want them to um, blend together. But I kind of like the blending. I think that's sort of part of the fun here. Sometimes it is just fun to make a mess. 
especially if it makes something kind of fun and pretty. So you just go back and forth with the dots that you have. And I'm doing it upside down, so you have to be patient with me if it looks a little crazy. And here we go. What do you think? I might wipe that and see if I can use some of this extra green and red and just sort of pop it in there. So you can play with it and decide if you want more white space or not. You can use some more of your paint. I kind of like this pink here. I'm going to borrow that and maybe go through that little white space. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of making your own abstract art. All right, I'm going to put that aside. And I wanted to show you another possibility. And it is called <laughs> using a palette knife. So I've never done this before. So um, have mercy, but I saw it done and I thought it was really fun. And so you could use a popsicle stick or if you happen to have one of these tools that would work too. And this is actually called a palette knife for painting. And again, so it wouldn't dry out. Miss Patty um, did a cover up with, gosh, that's kind of cool. And so again, let me make it so you can see what I'm doing. There you go. And you just make dots of blobs of paint everywhere and then enjoy it's remember what we talked about with abstract painting it's the joy of the colors and uh, shapes and symbols so sometimes it doesn't always have to be exactly what it is and so this is just fun with paint and um, just making And blending. And enjoying leaving texture. It'll take longer to dry, of course. Just going in. Just blending all the way. I want to make sure that my paint covers, I think, most of the surface. I even put in, as you can see, some blobs of white to see what that does with blending. So it's just kind of a fun working with texture and seeing what the colors do. And you can put the colors that make you happy. We all have favorite colors, don't we? What are your favorite colors? So somebody might enjoy doing bold reds and bright oranges. I kind of am partial to the greens and the pastels, but um, you beachy colors, those are Miss Patty's favorite, but you may like some really will call you a fauve, fauvist, just like Picasso. So, and then you can go back in and do different things with it. What if we turn this into a puzzle, huh? That might be interesting. It would be kind of hard, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, so, I'm gonna leave it alone, but it's kind of wild, but it's very fun to do. I said I was going to leave it alone, but it's a little irresistible to not keep playing, huh? <laughs> All right, so that is using a palette knife. So those are two projects that I thought uh, 
you would enjoy. And um, again, you have to simply must show me if you do some of the works. So I'm gonna share this. So like we talked about, I'm gonna put this down. There we go. A little messy. So the dot smear, the finger paint weave, and then there's um, the palette knife. And I kind of went at an angle, but this one, they went just down, up and down to make more like a, a sunset. And you could dot the colors so that it was a mirror image of a sunset in the sky and maybe the ocean. So to symbolize that, let, let me show you a few more uh, possibilities. So you can um, actually print out some famous artists, some that we've talked about at other aspiring artists and the ones that we talked about today. These are very much like Matisse, especially this one and the kitty and uh, uh, still life. And um, you can print them off and use the colors you want. You could do what Miss Patty did and um, do watercolor or you can do um, the Sharpies or colored pencils or crayon, or I was thinking if I was gonna do one of these, I would like to try um, the pastel, pastels. That would be fun. So I think that's all for today. So again, you have to promise me that if you do some of these projects that you'd be willing to share them. We would love that. So I hope you're having a great spring. It's a beautiful day and I hope to see you in the library soon. And I hope especially that you're creating and uh, making art that you enjoy making. So take care, have a wonderful day, bye-bye.